Next, we have Vivek Ramaswamy and Elon Musk, the co-leads for the Department of Government Efficiency, otherwise known as DOGE. Now, it's important to recognize that this department is not an official government entity, so Vivek and Elon are operating more like a steering committee or an advisory board to help drive government optimization. But let's go ahead and talk a little bit about what the charter of this new steer co would be. This idea of a government efficiency commission first originated when Elon Musk hosted an X Spaces call where he invited Trump on and had nearly a two hour call with him discussing his policies and his strategies for getting reelected this time around. Take a quick listen. But if they won the day after they get into office, we're gonna, this country will go out of business because they're gonna go to an energy policy that's not sustainable, wind and different things. You're not gonna have any. Yeah. And, and I know you're a big fan of the AI. <laughs> and I have to say yeah. that AI, and this is shocking to me, but AI requires twice the energy that the country already produces for everything. Sure. Um, well, just going you know, back to this, like, the, this, this basic thing, which people try to make it sound complicated, but it's not, but inflation is caused by government overspending. Right. I mean, I, I think it would be great to just have a government efficiency commission that takes a look at, at, at these things and, and just ensures that the taxpayer money, the, the taxpayer's hard-earned money is spent in a good way. Um, and and, and I'd, I'd be happy to help out on such a commission. I'd love if it. it were wrong. Well, you, you're the greatest cutter. I mean, I look at what you do. You walk in and you just say, you want to quit? They go <laughs> yeah. on strike. They, I won't mention the name of the company, but they go on strike and you say, that's okay, you're all gone. You're all gone, so every one of you is gone, and you are the greatest, you would be very good. This idea then started to marinate and mature within the Trump campaign, and this concept of a government overhaul to drive optimization and efficiency started to take place. Now, I wholeheartedly agree with the premise of this initiative. It's no secret that our government is perhaps the least efficient and most wasteful organization in the country, and an overhaul is sorely needed. And I talked briefly about why Elon would be exactly the right person to lead an effort like this in episode 10 of Daniel's Brew. Here's a quick snippet from that episode. Knowing everything we know about how corrupt, or at least the very least, how inefficient the Biden-Harris administration has been, I would absolutely expect Trump to come in and at a very minimum, just reevaluate every department and position across nearly all government entities. And with Elon by his side, I can just imagine how quickly and efficiently this would happen. Remember when Elon purchased Twitter back in April 2022? Back then, Twitter was literally a censored speech platform that heavily skewed towards suppressing conservative viewpoints. Elon came in and made some wholesale changes, fired a bunch of people, and then rebranded it to X, and look where we are today. It operates as one of the most pro-First Amendment platforms on the market. Here's Elon talking to Tucker Carlson about the changes that he made shortly after his Twitter acquisition. What percentage of your staff did you fire at Twitter? One of the great business stories of the year. <laughs> I think we're about we're about twenty uh, percent of uh, the original size. Uh, so eighty percent left. Uh, yes. So I mean, a lot of people voluntarily. Sure, sure, sure. But but it's eighty percent are gone from the day that, you took. That's over. correct. Yes. So how do you run the company with only twenty percent of the staff? Uh, it turns out uh, you don't need uh, all that many people to run Twitter. But eighty percent—that's a lot. Um, yes. Uh, over. I mean, if you're, if you're not trying to run some sort of. Uh, glorified activist organization uh, with, with and you don't care that much about censorship, then uh, you can really let go of a lot of people, it turns out. <laughs> if Elon can bring even half the efficiency he's implemented at X to the federal government, that would be a total win for the American public. Now, let's discuss his partner in crime in this initiative, Vivek Ramaswamy. Now, this guy first popped up on the scene when he ran for president this time around and went head to head with the likes of Nikki Haley, Ron DeSantis, and Chris Christie. Here are a few highlights from Vivek during this time, courtesy of News Nation and Wall Street Journal. It's one thing that Joe Biden and Nikki Haley have in common is that neither of them could even state for you three provinces in eastern Ukraine that they want to send our troops to actually fight for. Look at that. Mm -hmm. This is what I want people to understand. These people have, I mean, she has no idea what the hell the names of those provinces are, but she wants to send our sons and daughters and our troops and our military equipment to go fight it. So reject this myth that they've been selling you, that somebody had a cup of coffee stint at the UN and then makes eight million bucks after, has real foreign policy experience. It takes an outsider to see this through. Look at the blank expression. She doesn't know the names of the provinces that she wants to actually fight for. And there's a puppet master right there, the donors. The donors right there that are playing Enough. like the puppet okay, master. Enough. Enough. We okay. learned three things right there. First of all, Chris Christie also doesn't know what provinces in eastern Ukraine he actually wants us to fight for. Chris, your version of foreign policy experience 
was closing a bridge from New Jersey to New York. Yeah. So do everybody a favor. Just walk yeah. yourself off that stage. Enjoy a nice meal. Yeah. And get the hell out of this yeah, race. Let, let when it comes to Nikki, I think if you're going to actually send your sons and daughters while, to go die in somebody else's voting, war, while while you you better, voting, excuse me, Chris, I'm speaking. And I'm not done yet. I haven't you had heard your the chance, time when you aren't And we're going to be done. So listen up to this. Is If these people want to send your sons and daughters to go die in Ukraine, they've been arguing for it for a year. $200 billion of our taxpayer money sent over. Neither of them could even name for you the provinces that they actually want to protect. And this is the people who have been touting their so-called foreign policy experience. It is intellectual fraud. These people are lying to you, the same people who told you about weapons and mass destruction in Iraq to justify that invasion, didn't know the first thing about it, yet they sent thousands of our sons and daughters to go die. The same people who told you the same in Afghanistan, where the Taliban is still in charge 20 years later. Seven trillion of our national debt due to these toxic neocons. You can put lipstick on a Dick Cheney, it is still a fascist neocon. I wanna go back though to Nikki Haley's comment from earlier that she is somehow not responding to the will of these donors. Nikki, you were bankrupt when you left the UN. After you left the UN, you became a military contractor, you actually started joining service on the board of Boeing, whose back you scratched for a very long time, and then gave foreign multinational speeches like Hillary Clinton is, and now you're a multimillionaire. That math does not add up. It adds up to the fact that you are corrupt. And when I said they were bought and paid for, I meant the Republican establishment, not the Democratic establishment. Now you have Reid Hoffman, the person who's effectively George Soros Jr., funding lawsuits across this country against Donald Trump to keep him off the ballot, funding left-wing causes, we discover this week that he is one of Nikki Haley's largest supporters. Larry Fink, the king of the woke industrial complex, the ESG movement, the CEO of BlackRock, the most powerful company in the world, now supporting Nikki Haley. And to say that doesn't affect her is false because it's after that meeting later that day that she says that every American needs to be doxxed by having their ID, their government-issued ID, tied to what they say on the internet. So I think that this is far more corrupt than I even imagined when I entered politics. But I will say this, it is going to take a leader from the outside with fresh legs from the next generation to unite this country, not the broken politicians who are puppets of the puppet masters, but the actual people in this country. And here are a few clips of Vivek now speaking about the formation of Doge and his partnership with Elon on these efforts. Tackling this kind of waste, fraud, abuse, bureaucratic bloat, we're going for the stuff that's basic common sense that most Americans actually agree on. And I hope we're going to actually be able to help unite the country by eliminating waste, which is something that all Americans, regardless of partisan affiliation, can get behind. And that's how Elon and I are thinking I about it. Well, that was Vivek Ramaswamy touting the new Department of Government Efficiency that he and Elon Musk will be running. Now, also known as Doge, this temporary agency will partner with the White House and Office of Management and Budget to drive structural government change from outside the government. Now, they put out their first messaging on X yesterday, writing this, working overtime to ensure your tax dollars will be spent wisely. So what have we been spending some of our federal funds on? Let's review. Almost $550,000 went to a Russian lab to run experiments on cats' brains. That was spent by the National Institutes of Health. $3.7 million of funding went to a study on monkeys and gambling, another NIH fascinating project. And the State Department awarding tens of thousands of dollars for drag shows in Ecuador. And that's just the tip of the wasteful spending iceberg. Here's Senator James Langford rattling off just a few government spending projects at a House hearing last year. Watch. Last year, the State Department did a grant to Ecuador to host 12 drag shows in Ecuador with American tax dollars. Now, we may have different opinions in this room on drag shows. I'm just asking the simple question, is the best use of American tax dollars to actually fund drag shows in Ecuador with US tax dollars. National Science Foundation last year did a study of butterflies in Europe. So we funded with American taxpayer dollars. Last year there was also a uh, NEA grant that was done to set up a display in uh, Brooklyn 
for the Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, which, by the way, is not even an American band. We had an almost, uh, well, $350,000 grant to study smart toilets was one of the grants that we actually paid for with our federal tax dollars last year. Uh, we also had a grant that was done studying colonial Mexican soundscapes. We, last year, did a study on helmets and seat belts in Ghana to be able to study whether seat belts and helmets were effective for saving lives in Ghana. Can I just go ahead and answer that question for free? Seat belts and helmets are a good idea. They save lives. Free. Oh, Kaylee, <laughs> the American people had no idea about this, and how would they? when the administration we are disentangling ourselves from is committed to an opacity, and at the same time, Americans can't afford grocery bills, but hey, let's yeah. spend millions on a bunch of ridiculous projects outside this country. We're just getting started, and the thing I remember about last week is when Donald Trump was in this room, everybody else was celebrating. He was stone cold ready for the next step, because last Tuesday was not the destination, it was the start line for the revival of this country. The cabinet picks this week, you know what, Donald Trump wasn't afraid in putting Tom Homan and Christy Noem in charge of the mass deportations of millions of illegals for this country. But I also want to thank him for making sure that Elon Musk and I are in a position to start the mass deportations of millions of unelected federal bureaucrats out of the DC bureaucracy. That too is how we're gonna save this country. And I don't know if you've got to know Elon yet, but uh, he doesn't bring a chisel, he brings a chainsaw, and we're gonna be taking it to that bureaucracy. It's gonna be a lot of fun, but. So as that last Fox News clip showed us, Vivek is primed to start this work with Elon. And as we all know, government spending is out of control and definitely needs to be optimized. Now, what is it about Vivek's background that makes him a suitable partner for Elon on this movement? Well, he's a self-made American entrepreneur that got his start by launching a pharmaceutical company called Royvent Sciences. And then he subsequently co-founded an asset management firm called Strive Asset Management with the mission of being an anti-woke, anti-ESG portfolio management company designed to be a foil to the large, liberally indoctrinated hedge funds like BlackRock and Vanguard. So you have Elon, who's an incredibly sharp and strong executive with a bias for action, paired with another straight-shooting entrepreneur with an affinity for cutting out woke liberal agendas in large organizations. To me, this sounds like an excellent pair to go and weed out all of the inefficiencies that we see in our government today.